This is the Straight Truth Podcast, biblical answers to difficult questions from a Christian worldview. Pastor, next question comes in is actually a very personal question from a young woman who, who wrote us about this and wanted your advice and counsel. She says that she's married with three children and she recently fell pregnant again, well, got pregnant again uh, with a fourth child. And um, she's not told her husband about this and she actually unfortunately sought out an abortion. Mm. She says this was out of shock and fear that she did this. She recognizes this as a terrible decision now and a wrong decision. And she sought some counseling with other people, um, hasn't really got the sort of peace of mind that she has hoped. Mm -hmm. And, um, and hadn't told her, her husband about this. She felt like she cannot handle another child. And, um, and, and, and you get questions like this. I know I've sat with you before in your office where you're dealing with, with a situation like this with a, with a young person and, and they, they need your counsel and advice and, and really just biblical wisdom here. And I think that's the, the, the thrust of what we would mm -hmm. like to hear from you now. What, what do you say to somebody like this who's coming to your office or is asking for your advice? The first thing I always want to start with is... Uh, the gospel. I mean, does this dear lady truly know Christ? It is possible for genuine believers to make disastrous decisions, mm -hmm. but it's always a good question to ask, was that disastrous decision a manifestation of failure, where there is genuine faith, or was it a manifestation of the absence of genuine faith? Mm -hmm. So does this dear lady really know Jesus? You know, does a believer's reaction to a pregnancy, obviously it shouldn't, but can it include, I'm going to go down to the abortion clinic and have an abortion? Mm -hmm. So I think it's a good question to ask, you know, do, do you really know Christ? I, I think lots of people deal, I know, lots of people deal with God in generic fashion. Mm -hmm. Their knowledge of God is generic, mm -hmm. therefore their knowledge of salvation and, and, and forgiveness is misinformed and generic. And so there are people who say, I've asked God to forgive me, but they're not understanding that in, in the biblical terms of the gospel. Mm -hmm. you know, Christ died for sinners, for all the sins that we will ever commit, paid for them in full at the cross. The eternal Son of God took to himself an additional nature, a real human nature, so that he's the Son of Man, and he died on the cross for sinners, has been raised from the dead, lives forevermore, has ascended into heaven, is coming again, intercedes on, the, uh, on behalf of those who've trusted in him. Have you trusted in that Christ for the forgiveness of all your sins, including this one? You know, because there's nothing beyond the forgiveness of God if we turn to Christ for the forgiveness of our sins. So the place I'd want to begin with this dear lady is, do you mm -hmm. really know Jesus? Mm -hmm. Because there is no forgiveness, no matter how guilty mm -hmm. she feels or how many prayers that she would offer, there is no forgiveness apart from Christ shed blood. Mm -hmm. So have I trusted Christ? That would be the first thing I would ask. Let's just assume that she is a genuine believer and has made a disastrous choice. Mm -hmm. What do I do? Well, one of the things we do with guilt sometimes is we, we try to bury it. And what you'll find is there is no relief from guilt without genuine repentance. There just isn't. And so the answer is not to put it out of your mind, to try to stuff it into a closet of forgetfulness. The answer is to bring it out into the full light, see it for what it was and is, call it what it was and is, and then acknowledge that in Christ Jesus there is full forgiveness of that sin. So. What, dear, what this dear lady has done is murder. Mm -hmm. she, she murdered the baby, her own child, in her womb. I know she didn't, didn't uh, perform the procedure herself, but she, right. she sought it out and she allowed it. Mm -hmm. In that sense, she is responsible. Mm -hmm. So to have, to, to have freedom from guilt, I've got to see it for what it is. I mean, the very term confession, homilegeo, means to say the same as. So when I confess my sin, I see it the way God sees it, and I call it what God calls it. So she's going to have to look in the full face of this and see it for what it was and is, but then also believe that Christ's death is enough to pay for even that, mm -hmm. right? Even that. Mm -hmm. So bring it out into the open. Deal mm -hmm. with it honestly. And then if you're a genuine believer and Christ died for you, that sin is forgiven. Now, Mm -hmm. Now we embrace the rest of, of what the New Testament would always bring us to, which is go and sin no more. Mm -hmm. 
Go and sin no more. This is mm-hmm. something that should never happen in your life again. Mm-hmm. Know that the child is with the Lord. Mm-hmm. Praise be yeah, to God. Yeah. But this this was a this was you know egregious. It's terrible, and you have to see it for what it is, and then and then fully accept fully accept the forgiveness of Christ, which is real and full and free. God takes our sins and casts them as far away from us as the east is from the west. That's an infinite measure. Mm-hmm. Drops them into the sea of forgetfulness to remember them no more. Mm-hmm. He does not count them against us. If he should, we would perish. But what can separate us, Romans 8, from the love of God in Christ right. Jesus? Yeah. Nothing, mm-hmm. including our own sins. Does this sin need to be told to the church? To the church, uh, no. Mm. Public sin, public confession. Private sin, private confession. Mm. To her husband, given the fact that it sounds like it was recent, mm-hmm. I do think you should bring your husband yeah. into that, into that, into the knowledge of it. Let him know the brokenness of your heart. I'm going to guess. I don't know. Obviously, I don't know this, but I'm going to guess a part of her fear is related to what her husband's response might be to the pregnancy. Yeah, sure. So. If she were to sit down in my office and say, should I tell my husband, I'm going to ask questions like, is he physically abusive to you? Right. I mean, I mean, those sorts of things. So she might not yeah. need to, t- so we would have to walk through that together. Mm-hmm. But if her husband loves her and loves the Lord, and if mm-hmm. she's just afraid of burdening him or something, mm-hmm. which is kind of bizarre because they both made a decision for this baby to be conceived, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, sure. You need to trust the Lord and tell him. And then mm-hmm. together, I would say with all these sorts of go see your pastors, yeah. right? I'm going to trust this woman's a member of a local church, hopefully a healthy local church. This is exactly where you should be shepherded, yeah. not by me on the internet, mm-hmm, right? Yeah. But by your pastor in your yeah, church. That's a good point. So go go see him and, mm-hmm. and and talk to him, and let him shepherd both you and your husband yeah. through this phase of of your life. Mm. But everything else I've said, I believe, and I think should apply here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even there, there might be some fear. Like I'm going to ask the internet guy. Yes. rather than my pastor, my pastor because there's some fear there of, of exposing your sin to somebody you don't know versus somebody that you do. Absolutely, Josh. No, that's exactly right. Mm. You see this right now. I, this makes me sad, but with the biblical counseling movement, mm. which I'm thankful for a lot yes, of that. Yes, of course. Yeah. But what ends up happening is you'll have a church set up a counseling center, as mm. it were. Then you have another church that's faithful to the scriptures, mm-hmm. but members commit sins. They don't want to talk yeah, to, to their, their pastors mm-hmm. about. So they go to this counseling center for mm-hmm. their help. I do not believe that that embraces mm-hmm. the New Testament concept of the mm-hmm. local church. God gave you human shepherds yep. for a reason. And if they're good and godly men, and if your church is healthy, if, if your church is not healthy and sound, then find one that is. Mm. But if your church is healthy and sound and you have faithful shepherds, this is exactly That's right. what they're meant to do yep. in your life. So let them be to you what God means for them to be to you. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Straight Truth Podcast. Now, Straight Truth is listener supported. So if you'd like to find out ways how you can help us to continue to produce this podcast, you can go to our website and find out ways to do that, straighttruth.net. At that website, you'll also find links to all of our previous episodes and our social media channels. So be sure to check it out. Straight Truth is a production of Walking in Grace Ministries, the preaching and teaching ministry of Pastor Richard Caldwell. For more information, go to walkingingrace.org.